Welcome to my humble little office. My name is R. Keith Andrews. I am a spiritual guide and paranormal adept. The journey continues today on November 26, 2021 at approximately 11.05 a.m. PST. Hey, look at that. I got the date right. Anyway, that being said, things are definitely changing. There is no question there. The one consistency in this world, well, the one consistency in existence, is change. Now, I return to this world for one primary reason, and that is to spread a very simple message to people. That message being, working together, we can make this a better world for almost everybody. Now, when I talk about working together, a couple of things we got to realize is everyone is in exactly the same position. No matter how you got to where you are, no matter what your orientation, what your bank account looks like, who you vote for, you know, what you think of the education system, it doesn't matter. You're all in the exact same place. You're right here, right now. And this is the only time in existence that you, that you can ever change anything in your life. You can talk about what you should have done, what you would have liked to have, do, have done, okay, all you want. Anything that's already happened in the past, regardless of what you've heard about, about time travel. Now, the, the funny part about it is there's a lot of people that will tell you time travel is possible. And the reality of it is this, because time only moves forward, okay, in one sense, linear, linearly speaking, it only moves forward, which means if you move forward, you're going this direction. If you all of a sudden pick a direction and pick a point in the past, you're moving forward, you're still moving forward. This now becomes your present way over here becomes your past. So you're not going back, you're going ahead in a different line. It doesn't change anything else. That said, if you move forward, you stop here and you jump forward. When you get up here, there is no information on you in, the, in however long you went forward. But again, you cannot come back. So you jump forward, you get up into the future, and now you've taken the information from the past into the future, but you're the one that's going to be behind the eight ball because whatever's changed, you won't have the build up to it. Now, that'd be the first issue. This is why I say we are all right here, right now. Now, you can talk about what you should have done, what you would have liked to have done. You can talk about the idea of what you've got planned for the future, but the reality is when you get to the future, Okay, when you get to tomorrow, you're still in the present. Okay, hence the concept of today is the tomorrow you talked about yesterday, and today is the yesterday you will talk about tomorrow. All of which means that today, tomorrow, and yesterday are exactly the same place. Now, this society has taken a massive turn for the worse, in my opinion. Okay, we go back 50 years, we didn't have the technologies, things were a little rougher in some ways, as in you had to do more physical work. But the reality of it is, we didn't have all the plastics that are, are collecting on the landscape. We were using biodegradable stuff. Paper was the, the name of the game. And paper, in case you haven't noticed, when it gets wet, it breaks down pretty quick. Okay, you don't see islands of paper on the ocean. You see islands of plastic. Okay. We didn't have all the extra chemicals and what have you that were man-made. We didn't have all the extra medications. This is very true. And some people died because of the lack of these, of these new meds. But there were no side effects of the medications they didn't have either. Which, when you think about it, makes sense. If you don't have a medication, you're not going to have the side effect. Okay. So, in today's world, People have been taught over the last several centuries that greed, fear, and materialism is a really good idea. Well, what do you think? How, how's it working for you? I know from my standpoint, I never did develop a real solid appreciation of money or the material world for that matter. Yes, I like my toys. I like my things over the, you know, I like living in a, in a home. Okay, but... Do I put any real weight behind it? Not in the least. 
Okay. Do I trust people? Not in the least. Okay. And yeah, I know that sounds really bad. But if you have my if you have my past and seen the number of betrayals that I've seen and that I've gone through, it would make sense. Now this you know, this said, I am still a very firm believer that ninety, ninety five percent of the people out there are decent people striving to make things better. But people are so caught up in the teachings of fear of immediate gratification. Okay. I have frankly not seen this much greed and debauchery since Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay. Now you can talk about the you know about any of the references as being, oh, they're made up. Okay, they were invented by man. Well whether they were invented by man or not is irrelevant. Okay, you take a look at Noah's Ark, just for example. You can call it a made-up thing until you find out that they actually found no, they found a a, bo a boat that is that is consistent with the description of Noah's Ark at the top of Mount Ararat, were grown right into the mountain. Now that said, you can say history is made up all you'd like, but there's physical proof that it's not. And with that in mind, this idea that many people seem to have, let's destroy the artifacts from the past. Let's destroy the statues and the paintings that were made from the past because we don't like what they represent. Well, don't look at them because the events happened. Okay. And we all have to realize, even in, like in my case, I've done things I'm not happy with. I cannot undo them. Okay, they are there. They are part of what makes me me. And your mistakes, your miscalculations, your bad choices are just that. They are part of what makes you you today. Now, you cannot alter how you got to where you are, but you can certainly alter where you're going because energy does not stop. It does not get destroyed. It gets reconfigured. It gets redirected. And you can control where it's going. But it's up to you and you alone to decide what you're content with, what you're happy with, what you're not content with, and modify the energy flow to make certain that you're eliminating the things you're not content with, that you're altering those energy patterns so you don't go back through them. This is why it is absolutely imperative that you find a group of people that are supporting you in a positive fashion. Not telling you fear everything under the sun. I will tell you the number of people that I've talked to, okay, since I got into into the professional side as in generating an income, okay, not much of one in all fairness, but since I got into that in 1986, I have I have dealt with in excess of 80,000 clients over the years. And I have dealt with people from virtually every walk of life. Multi-millionaires. Like I remember one day I helped a gentleman in one of my consulting situations. I helped a, gen a gentleman close an inter intercontinental $16 million lawsuit. Now, I am not a lawyer. I'm not even trained well in, in law. I had three years of law in high school. But my instincts are what I've lived on. Okay. Money doesn't make a lot of difference. Money is simply... I've an agreed upon barter system. That's all it is. Okay. People that claim that money is the root of all evil, I'll tell you, I'm quite, you know, I'm not stupid. If somebody offers me money, I'm obviously going to take it, at least obviously to me. If there are no strings attached. Now, I don't put a lot of weight behind money, but here's one of the things I am doing. Okay. When I've got a little extra money, which isn't very often in all fairness. Okay, I do believe in a very simple philosophy that those that have to have an um, abundance, even if it's not a lot of abundance, and I'm about to give you the formula I work with, those that have the abundance, it is absolutely imperative that you help those that don't. Now, the guideline I'm personally running on is real simple. Figure out what it takes to run your household, to cover your necessities, your rent or mortgage, utilities, insurance, food, transportation, 
Okay, and make sure you're looking to take care of the future. Okay, that said, once you've got that worked out, now for me, I can do that on $2,000 a month. Not many people can do that because I've got, a, I, I've got a phenomenal setup on rent. I've been in the same place for nine years now. Okay, I've got fabulous rent because of it. But with that in mind, when I hit that $2,000 mark, which is what I require to comfortably handle all of what I just said, you figure out what number fits in there for you. After that, I will be taking 10% of whatever I make over the 2000 and use that towards helping other people. Okay, as in buying individuals, whether I know them or not, is irrelevant. Okay, I've been known to walk into a grocery store. I've been standing in line. I had a little extra money. Somebody was a little short, and I just went, scrap it. I'm picking up, you know, let me cover the, the whole bill for that grocery. Now, that may not seem like much to you, but for those of you that give to registered charities or to the church, okay, understand something very, very clear. Can talk to the people that you're donating to. Find out how much of that percentage is actually going to the people that they're claiming to help. So far, the best I've found, the best I've ever found, was literally at 30%. So if you give a dollar to, the, to one charity I've run into, 30%, and in all fairness, I forget which one it was, 30 cents on the dollar would go to the charity they were talking about. Okay, most of the time it's under 10 from what I get from what I've gathered. But do your own research. Okay. Now, when I help individuals, 100% of what I of what I donate of what churches call tithing. Okay, 100% of what I donate to people, what I give people with as far as buying, you know, buying groceries, paying for a meal for them, whatever. 100% of it, okay, is literally, 100% of it goes to that individual, not 10%, not 20, 30% of it, you know, not 30% of it, 100% of what I use goes to that charity, to that helping somebody. And the only thing I ask of people, quite seriously, is to do the same thing. And, you know, I mean, this is a massive undertaking, turning the tide of the way the civilization globally is going. Okay, and I am certainly asking you and offering to, I never was planning on this, but, as a matter of fact, I fought it for a very, very long time. I have decided the only way I'm going to make this happen is to take a step up into the spotlight and go, okay, Join me on this journey of striving to shift the tide of the energy the way it's going. This is a time where we all stand up together, take a look, and ignore the color of the person beside you. Because I'll guarantee, and there ain't much I will guarantee, but you take an, an earthquake or a forest fire or take a, a building fire, whatever. You put a natural disaster in the situation. People don't ask you. What color is your skin? How much money is in your bank account? And by the way, who did you vote for? So I can decide whether I'm going to whether I'm going to help you or not. Okay, when we are talking about you know when we are talking about you know, nature kicking back, nature never checks what your mortgage balance is like when they burn down your when it burns down your house. Never checks whether or not you donated to the SPCA. Okay, of course. In all fairness, it doesn't check to see whether you've been beating your kids every other day either. Okay, nature doesn't check. And you shouldn't either. When you're helping people, help people because that is, the, in my opinion, that's the right thing to do. Energy out, energy in. Okay, I'm not a millionaire. Okay, am I, am I asking you to join me on this quest? Yes, absolutely I am. But I'm not telling you who to go to, who to go to church with, or who to go to temple with. Okay, if you're going to a coven or you're going to a church, I don't care. If you're sitting in the corner watching, you know, watching cartoons, you know, and playing tiddlywinks with with 
old and with old pennies. It doesn't matter to me. All I'm saying is when you're out dealing with other people, including the people in your own home, give them a hand where you can. Let's get another pandemic started. But this pandemic is just simply smile. And as I was accused of one day, let's get a cult started. That cult being focused on one thing, helping each other out, regardless of where you stand in life, regardless of how much money you've got, regardless of what your dress code looks like. I mean, I remember years ago, I was walking with a, with a young lass one day, and the guy on the other side of the street had a two-foot rooster cut. And, like, he had great big spikes up here, okay, of hair. And the last I was tired that I was walking with made a, a under, her, under her breath, derogatory comment about the guy's hair. My immediate reaction was I looked at her and said, tell me, what bothers you more? And think about this when you're making fun of somebody's clothing choices. What bothers you more? The fact that, they're, that they've chosen that style or the fact that you didn't? Now, I am being, you know, I do qualify that in a sense. Make sure that people are, you know, that, pe that when you're choosing a clothing style, that you're showing respect for yourself. Okay. Now, yes, in, in Western society, nudity is something that people say you shouldn't have, you know, keep it concealed, don't show it to the public. Over in Europe, in some countries, that apparently is not a problem. Same as in some of the, especially in a lot of the, of what people are calling third world countries, that's not an issue. From my standpoint, I encourage you to do, show yourself respect and share that respect with other people. Okay. Again, I only follow three laws. Okay. But if you look at all the laws you follow, you'll find that they likely fall into the three I follow. Be true to yourself first. Do unto others as you desire them to do unto you. And energy out, energy in. By following those laws, it does mean that when I'm trained, when I'm out and about, if there is a law, whether I agree with it or not, if it's there, I do my best to follow it. If it is not a law that applies to me, then I basically ignore it. But the reality of it is this. Okay, and where a law that doesn't apply to me, you know, you know, it's against the law to rob a bank. Well, technically it applies to me, but I've got no interest in robbing the bank in the first place. Okay, so when you're out and about, you desire to be treated properly, treat other people properly. And that's the cause, that's the issue of energy out, energy in. Now, it's a wonderful thing. And you are, you are likely correct. I may be completely off my nut. But let me ask you this. Which is, more, which is more off your nut? Striving to be nice to each other? Or shooting at somebody and then asking them if they're friendly? Ask yourself which one of that seems, seems to be a better option. Okay, I can pretty much guarantee, I know from my standpoint... If somebody smiles at me, I say I take it as they're a little bit more, you know, amicable. You know, I saw it posted. I saw it said on a on a show one day, right? And I forget what the show was, but somebody was shooting at this woman, and you know, and when they caught up to her, it's like we're not here to hurt you. And she goes, "Really?" Because all that all that shooting at me kind of had me confused. And I've seen this done multiple times. People start a fight, they start calling somebody names, and then they want to know why the person's aggravated. Okay, well, I'll tell you. Energy out, energy in. Okay, and that simply means whatever you put out there, that's what you're drawing back. Now, am I going to tell you, walk away from the group that you're standing there that you're with? That depends on you. Okay, but I will tell you this, if the group you're following, if the group you're hanging around is going out of their way to hurt other people, okay, ask yourself, would you desire these other, these, this group of yours to come to you and hurt you? 
Again, do unto others as you desire them to do unto you. If you're following a spiritual leader that says, fear everything, and I, I find it fascinating. I grew up in the church. And I find it absolutely fascinating that a church that claims and that, that believes in, you know, in a God that created everything would actually encourage you to be afraid of them, afraid of said God. Okay. It does not make any sense to me. Okay. Because let's face it. If you're treating the people around you, the easiest way I've found to lower the crime rate around you is get to know your neighbors. Become, you know, be nice to your neighbors. Now, this does not guarantee that they will be nice to you. But it does guarantee that you're nice to them. And much as it doesn't guarantee it, it stacks the deck in favor of them treating you decently. And, you know, I don't know about you, but my friends, I never steal. Well, I don't steal from anybody. I don't think. Okay. I mean, heck, I don't even, I don't even actually go online and download, download, um, pirated movies. Now, in my case, I don't believe in doing that personally. Have I ended up with some movies? Certainly. I don't think there's a person on the planet that has access to the internet. Hasn't ended up with one. But... Does that make what I've done right? Absolutely not. I love the I love the one the one T shirt I saw. It says, you know, there's a place in you know, there's a place when people come to you, right, and they go, There's a place in hell for you. The T shirt said it all. Yep, there's a place for me in hell. They call it the throne. Now, the ironic part of it is if you don't believe in hell, it's okay. Okay, I'm not telling you whether you believe in heaven or believe in hell. I won't even tell you to believe in gravity, but I, but I like the way I saw it put one day. Those of you that don't that don't believe in God, better pray you're right. Okay. Those of you that don't believe in gravity, don't push your luck with it. Because I will tell you, you don't have to believe in it. It will end up causing you all kinds of problems in all likelihood. Is there a possibility that it won't? Certainly. I don't know about you, but I don't have that much faith that so I'm willing to, to bet on it. I remember years ago, I heard about a, a shaman in Africa that was so convinced that his God would protect him that he that he told everybody, you know, God, you know, our God will protect us to the point I am bulletproof. I cannot be killed with bullets. Well, this is a great idea. But he had everybody worked up and convinced so much, so strongly in his tribe, that when he was met, when he was faced with with a um, with a Westerner that had a gun, and it was it was set up quite nicely. There was all the all the proper legal legal things set up, and in front of his whole community, okay, this gentleman he says, "Look, you can shoot me. It's okay. Here's the paperwork that says nobody's going to come after you." So what ended up happening, long and the short of it, in front of the whole community, this chap lined up and shot the shaman. Well, guess what? His God didn't stop him from bullets. Uh, they did not protect him from the bullets, and they buried the shaman. What this tells you is very simple. Yeah, you can dream about all the things you'd like, but I will pretty much guarantee if you do something stupid, you're going to have troubles. Okay. Now, for me, I never encourage somebody to skydive. Okay, and the reason for that is I've never found a found a good reason to get out of a perfectly good aircraft. Okay. Now, the neat part about it, I came back with a very, very simple message. Okay, and it is one I am doing my level best to, to pass around to people. And that's where I require your assistance. I am not flamboyant. I don't have all the video games, and I'm not going out of my way to get a great big setup to make everything look right. What you see behind me is normal. This is the way I live. Okay. And, you know, I don't, I mean, granted, I do have some odd things around. But if you look up on the shelf here, I'm trying to point to it without actually looking at it. But you get the idea. There. That picture and that thing there. That is the handle of a sawed-off double-barrel shotgun, but it is a complete mock-up. 
It was made for Halloween 20 years ago. Uh, okay. And it looks great. It looked great enough at that point to, to bother, uh, bother the police in the bar, you know, on Halloween night. But there is not a thing on it that was ever part of a gun. Okay. There's no problem with your imagination. Okay, have your imagination as far as you desire it. In my opinion, and this is what I promote to people, violence between people is not a functional path. Okay, there are three places, I think three places, three places where violence is functionally acceptable. In movies, okay, in your imagination, in your head, okay, in, in writing, and in mutually agreed upon sports events. Like, for instance, MMA or MMA and boxing, if both of you are actually agreeing to it, there's no problem. You both know what you're up against. Okay. Military, I've always been a supporter, a supporter of people that are stepping up to the plate, join the military to protect, or the police force to protect their community to protect their country. Absolutely. I have massive questions around the motivations and around the directions that the seniors in these organizations take. I absolutely do. But then, much as I agree with tithing, I have massive, and I, I absolutely support people that strive to help people by donating to charities and what have you. I have massive questions around what is done with the money. Okay, what is done with the tax breaks? I like the way it was said one day. It said one day that if billionaires actually paid taxes like everybody else, they would still be making billions of dollars. So if you're really tied up on the idea of money, understanding that money is simply a, an agreed upon barter system. And to me, it's easier to move a $10 bill than it is to move a, to move a cow. A lot easier. But that being said, okay, I do ask you to join with me on this journey and start helping the people around you. Get to know your neighbors and get that community feeling back into your life. It may not be what you're expecting. You may find it a whole lot more enjoyable than what you've got. And I'm not saying believe me. I'm saying give it a shot. See what happens. Okay, you can't change how you how you got to where you are, but you can certainly, and we can certainly, working together, alter the direction that life is unfolding. But it's up to you as an individual. Now, with that said, I will be back again tomorrow. Until then, take care of yourselves and each other, and for pity's sakes, stay positive.